Hi, it's Dorothy Guining with Scrapbooking Quebec. Today I'm here for the Scrapbook Nerd online shop and I was asked to create a page all about men. So I thought this was the perfect opportunity to create a layout using these photos of my husband with his trophy fish. I'm going to give you step-by-step -step instructions and measurements for photos and page parts will be written on the screen. Now this is what I'm going to be using, which is a new collection by Photoplay called Best Dad Ever. Now I have the 12x12 paper pack, which also includes a 12x12 sheet of cardstock stickers, as well as the ephemera pack. And from my stash, I added some alpha thickers, as well as white cardstock. Now here's a closer look at the paper in the pack. Even though one side has barbecues and fish and gears and tools and stuff like that, the flip side is plaid, wood grain, diagonal stripe. It's a very usable collection. Now the first step is to create a frame style foundation with three pieces of paper. One of them should be plain. I gutted two of the papers and then cut three squares of paper. Mine measure five and a quarter inch each and two of those squares come from the paper I gutted from behind the foundation page. Now you can see I pre-matted my photos in advance and that frame there, that is where I will be doing my journaling. So prepare a journaling box for the top right hand corner. That frame comes from the ephemera pack. I'm going to double map my photos and I'm using the wood grain paper. Again, that's paper I gutted from behind my foundation page and double matting the photos is optional, but I wanted them to pop off the page a bit more. I found them a bit lost in that printed paper. Now what I'm doing is inking the edges of the squares and this step is optional. I find that it unifies the three squares and other ways of doing that would be to add stitching or you can just leave it as it is. Now what I'm doing is playing with placement and now I'm going to prepare this journaling box. Now what I'm going to use is a stencil by Echo Park that I got at the Scrapbook Nerd and to use this I'm going to hold the stencil in place with washi tape and I'm also covering up the parts that I don't want to ink. And I'm using a sponge brayer with some dark brown ink. So that creates some journaling lines. Now I want to point out, if you would like to add computer journaling and use this stencil, hold off on this step at this moment and wait until the end of the video and I'm going to share with you a few tricks I learned on how to do that. Now what I'm doing is adding some ink to the top right hand corner and bottom left hand corner. I'm using another stencil by Echo Park called Scattered Dots I think. It's an old stencil and why I'm doing this this is where I will be placing embellishment clusters. So if you would like to add some splatters or some ink or something to the corners where the embellishment clusters will go, now is the time to do it. Sometimes that's a good way, a good foundation for an embellishment cluster. Some sprays, some ink, some splatters. Now that the foundation page is prepared, it's time to adhere the squares as well as the photos. Now you're going to notice mine are fairly spread out and the reason why is because my photos and my journaling box are quite large. So I've spread them out quite a bit. However, if you want to make this page and your elements, your photos are smaller, I would recommend you just push in these squares a little bit tighter towards the middle of the page. Once I get these three squares down, as well as the photos, I'm going to add the journaling box, which has been prepared, as well as the title. I always recommend you get the foundation page in place, as well as the photos, and then, before decorating, add the text and the title, or at least establish the spot where those elements will go. For me, that's the most important part of the page. So I'm almost finished here. And the title block, which is going to go in the bottom left-hand corner, 
that's going to be the most important embellishment cluster on the page. So I'm going to show you how I'm creating mine. But what you should keep in mind is the title spot here is going to be the main embellishment cluster. Now what I'm using is another frame from the ephemera pack. And that is where I'll place my title. In a minute, you'll see I cut some white cardstock just to put behind that frame. I'm not going to adhere it right away, but what I am going to show you is the flip side of that diagonal print. There was a cut apart sheet, and from that off camera, I cut out, I fussy cut that fish. So I'm going to have it pop out of the frame, and what I'm doing though is I'm adding a bit of ink, and I find I'm not a very good fussy cutter and adding ink to fussy cutting is a good way to hide little imperfections. So that's just what I did there and I'm going to have that fish pop out of the frame and then what I'll do is add that white cardstock behind it just to solidify it a bit because I do plan on popping up that title block on foam squares later on. Now I'm going to go into the ephemera pack and in the ephemera pack I find this expression that says father of the year. So what I'm doing is snipping off father because this page is about fishing. It's not about fatherhood and I'm going to pop that up on foam adhesive as well of the year. And what I also did was I put the word fish from those alphas on wax paper just so that I could plan placement a bit. And I'm going to put that right on top of that little piece of ephemera. So the title's going to read Fish of the Year. And honestly, I don't think that's a word of exaggeration because this fish and this photo was taken in September 2017. And the flyer for this outfitter that came out this year in 2019, they actually used this photo in the flyer. So if it wasn't the fish of the year, it certainly was close to it. Now what I'm doing is I'm popping up that title block on foam adhesive. Like I said, whatever you put here, the title, it is the main embellishment cluster. So keep that in mind. Now what you should do is work on the kitty corner, add another embellishment cluster. And what I'm doing is adding a few pieces of ephemera Again, I altered a piece. That one said best dad ever, but I'm just using the word best. And underneath it, I'm tucking a file tab that says awesome. Also in the ephemera pack, there was another uh, file tab, and I'm actually going to put that in the bottom cluster by the title. And I often do that when I work on embellishment clusters. I kind of go back and forth and I work on color and balance and repetition and all that kind of stuff. So once that's done, I actually start contemplating adding a third embellishment cluster, but I'm not quite sure. And what you see there, it says it's official. That was part of the same cut apart sheet where I got that fish. Um, I'm inking it a bit and I'm contemplating putting it on top of that photo on the top left, but I'm not quite sure. And I get out the sticker sheet in a minute and there's some stickers there that have fish and flies and stuff like that, but I can't quite decide. So actually what I end up doing is I turn off the video and I went and did something else and I came back and then I decided to just use It's Official, but I tucked it in a little tighter, made it a bit more discreet, and left it at that. I find that's a good piece of advice if you're hesitant, if you're not quite sure what to do. If you can, just walk away from your project, and when you come back, you'll look at your project with fresh eyes, and I find it helps anyway. So I'm happy with that. My page is finished. And now what I'm going to do is share with you a few tricks I learned on adding computer journaling when using that Echo Park back to school stencil. I ended up having to redo my journaling block. What I did was I fooled around with some fonts on my computer and with Microsoft Word, I used Century Gothic at 16, printed it out, and that was the perfect size and the perfect font to match the lines in that stencil. So once I printed it out, 
I did the same technique I showed you earlier, which was I taped the stencil on top of the journaling and ran the ink and the sponge brayer across it. It was a perfect fit. I'm sure you could do it with other fonts as well. I tried it with two and the Century Gothic at 16 worked perfectly. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the Scrapbook Nerd YouTube channel as well as my channel, Scrapbooking Quebec. Also, all products used will be listed in the information box below this video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.